on today's show, we've realized that a lot of property developers tend to purchase a big piece of land and they develop on that land. So it happens that a lot of people who are looking to buy properties end up buying sectional titles within a bigger piece of land. This might be beneficial for the developer. However, for the one purchasing that property, is it really an advantage or disadvantage to buy the said property? Now, as promised, we have Mr. Pender with us today joining us, and he's going to be telling us more regarding the difference between a sectional title as well as a single title. Now, Mr. Pender, there seems to be a lack of education when it comes to actually buying property with the general community. Tell me, most people that buy in sectional title setups are not well informed with regards to these setups. Um, due to some instance, especially when the sectional title is freestanding, what does the law say in protecting the people for not being informed thoroughly? Thanks very much, Ms. And thanks for NBC. Uh, greeting to the viewers as well. Uh, the two uh, types of uh, residentials we have here in Namibia is the single residential uh, as well as the general residential. Now, the general residential is normally referred to as a, a sectional title scheme, which is governed by the Act of 2009. So the difference between the two is quite easy to notice. Uh, in terms of setup, the general residential or sectional title scheme setup is quite different. You have what you call flat townhouses or freestanding houses. So it means that individual buying under the sectional title scheme, they share what you call an elven. So they share that elven. Maybe it can be five, it can be 10, it can be 20. So that is what uh, distinguish the, 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 or that what make a difference in terms of the sectional title scheme. Now the single residential uh, this residential is uh, whereby an individual homeowner, individual buyer, buy uh, his or her own elf. He does not share his elf with uh, uh, anyone else. And the, another notable um, section, uh, another notable difference uh, if, that can stand out the sectional title scheme is by the act the sectional title schemes are, are required to form what you call the body corporate and they are also required to be managed by an entity which is referred to as a managing agent so that is a, is a standout difference uh, now when it comes to uh, policies and um, uh, act as I say, the sectional title schemes is governed by the section, uh, the, the, the Act of 2009, the sectional title scheme. And your question, you mentioned that those uh, policy or the, the, the acts are not being followed properly by perhaps the, 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 the third party who are involved uh, or the parties that are involved. But let me just highlight it and make it a little bit clear here. When you are buying a house, uh, there are two primary or three primary people that are involved. The first primary is a, it's a developer. The second primary, uh, it's, a, it's a, what you call the agent, and then the buyer, him or herself. Now, normally it's a duty for a developer through his uh, agent to explain to the buyer before they're making their final buying decisions as the consumer on what is the person is buying into, whether the person is buying into a general residential, which is called sectional title scheme, or the person or the buyer is buying into the single residential. So most of, of, of home buyer, they, what we refer them as a first home, uh, first time home owners, they are quite not really uh, uh, up with with the difference in terms of the two, and they find themselves sometimes buying into any uh, into the two types of residential, but they do not know what difference. Uh, does it have between the two so they do not understand or they are not aware of that uh, difference and who now should um, should explain to them the difference you you are expecting the developer and the age through their agent when the moment they are marketing and they are advertising the, that that house uh, to that specific buyer or to the target group you are expecting them to explain thoroughly the difference between the two you are buying a house as a, a general residential or you are buying a house that falls into a single residential but it's 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 it's, it's tricky because remember they own the, the 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 agent through the developer want to sell and once they 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 they, they start being clear on, on this uh, in terms of benefit and disadvantage when it comes more especially on the sectional title scheme they are likely to scare the the, the potential buyer now if somebody will have a second thought 
uh, into whether I'm really going to buy under sectional title or should do, I rather wait and buy from a, a, a single residential. And, and again, it, another motivating factor is, is the price difference in terms of your, your, your dwellings or your houses. It's the, it's the price difference. When it comes to single uh, residential, the sectional title scheme, houses are a little bit cheaper. But when it comes to uh, uh, general or single residential, it becomes a little bit more expensive. So it's a choice again uh, for a buyer, but then the buyer needs to understand the difference between the two for them to be able to make an informed decision and to be content on what their decision at the end of the day once they, 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 they bought their house. Because what you, are, what you are finding now more interesting and a bit discouraging is, is a withholding of, inf of such information from the agent and from the developer. Now, buyers come in and they all find themselves, wow, I'm under a sectional title, I need to form what you call a body corporate, and again, we need to have what you call the managing agent. So people are a little bit getting a, a bit of uncomfortable and of course questioning the legitimacy of, of, of the developer, of the agent. Why was this information um, uh, in, enlightened to us at, at the beginning? And again, one can use the one can easily push it out again to the buyer, to, to, to the homeowner, to the buyer, to the potential buyer. Your duty as a potential buyer, when you are buying as a first homeowner, what is your, your duty? Your role is to, to make a proper research and ensure that you understand what you are buying in. Because remember, you are buying this house for the period of 20 years. You have to be uh, comfortable and, and, and being, being able to pay uh, the, the house or your bond for 20 years. So you need to make a, a proper research where you are buying. What are the disadvantages? What are your expectations? What are your roles and the responsibility? I think uh, that, that, that should be for now. Mr. Penda, I must say I'm really enjoying our talk and uh, it's very, very enlightening what you're telling us right here. Now, I just wanted to know, compared to single title, it's common these days that most developers opt for sectional titles. What do you think is the interest for them? If you look at an elf or a single elf for, 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 for an individual, which is maybe a 400 to 500 square meter, uh, that elf can easily accommodate how many units if you are turning it, that whole elf intersectional title scheme. You can easily accommodate what uh, five or ten units that, 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 have, that have a potential to give you an excessive amount of, of income. So the, the difference is quite easy. Uh, the sectional title give you a, a single elf where you are allowed to build a lot of units. And remember, the sectional title set, the setup is un, uh, units are a bit closer together. So you, have, uh, you don't have a land to waste on, on, on that regard. But if you opt for uh, a single residential, whereby an individual uh, share that, uh, solely share that, that, that with his own uh, that elf, or individual own that uh, elf only, 600 square meter is just for an individual. But if you opt for sectional title, the general residential, 600 square meter can easily accommodate five to 10 units. That's a different. And of course, the developer would want to go where there's, there's money. At the end of the day, it's, 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 it's the income for them. At the end of the day, it's the income for them. Where are they benefiting more in terms of, 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 of revenue? So they, they are likely to choose for, for the, the, the sectional title, where they are buying 1,000 square meter and they will build, uh, let, let's say, 20 or 10,000 uh, unit. And each, on average, each and every unit may be cost from let's say uh, 500,000 or 600,000, that's on, that's on the average. So that's a benefit for, for, any, for, for a developer who is uh, building or developing under the sectional title scheme. And uh, tell us, uh, when it comes to owning properties under sectional title, what are the disadvantages compared to the advantages of this? Yeah, the advantage of, of uh, Owning a house under state, uh, sectional title schemes, as I say, the first one, it comes a bit cheaper from the onset. It's cheaper compelling to the single residentials. As you see, your unit in square meter is quite small. Maybe you just have 200, 100 square meter, and that can perhaps cost you a uh, loan about on average of 500,000. But if you are buying in a, a single residential whereby you have your own elf, which is maybe 300 to 600 square meter, the average price in Osona, for instance, is likely to stand from 700 to 800 up. 
So that's the first benefit. It's cheaper to buy into the sectional title scheme. And again, another benefit is like a first home time buyer, you do not have a, a really huge family, maybe you and your spouse or with you some, some two kids. Uh, you do not really need a huge house that will give you a stress at the end of the day to develop. But we look at this, a, a single residential, you have a, your house confined in the portion of, of your elf and you have now the high, big elf outside there, which is not in use, which are again going to, 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 to force you to, to make again extra investment. What are you going to do with that, with that, um, that piece of land available in your elf? So for, so for the new uh, smaller people, small couples, two people uh, with only a few family members, you, you are likely just to buy into a sectional item, which is a little bit cheaper. And again, the, the, the third benefit is the houses are so closer together, it, it creates what you call neighborhoodness. Because remember, your houses is just a, throw, a little throw away from your neighbor's house. So now when something is happening uh, to your house, maybe uh, some security concern happening in your house, burglary or, or, or any of those kind of things, you your neighbor can easily pick it up because you are not that far from, from, from your neighbor and then your neighbor can uh, be able to, 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 to alert the, the security or to alert you that there's something happening in your house. That's the third one. And um, the fourth one, it's, it's quite um, interesting, is um, you share, you share the levies as an elf. You don't necessarily pay, uh, uh, you have your in individual uh, uh, levies that you pay, but overall you share that with the, with, uh, with, um, the, 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 the rest of the unit owners. So if there's a repair and maintenance to be done in your, in, in your, in your elf under that scheme, that cost is shared. That, that's, 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 that's a disadvantage. I mean, that's a, one of the advantage. And the disadvantage is there are conduct rules and the uh, policies that govern the Sectional Title Act. I already mentioned that you, have, uh, you are living so close to each other, you are living so close to each other, whereby maybe uh, noise, it, noise pollution is an issue, whereby uh, people living there need to, to be in some sort of harmony. So there are those rules, and those rules need to be abided by the, each and everybody shelling that elf. Now, it's a disadvantage to me, it's a disadvantage to you because you are not really free, uh, living in a free environment. You can't play your music as loud as you want. Unlike the single residential, you might be a um, few meters away from your neighbors. So when you are playing your music, it, it, it does not really necessarily sometimes um, hindering your neighbors or, or it can be heard by your neighbors. So you have that kind of freedom that you do not have it guaranteed in your, in your section of title. Another uh, a third, a, a second um, uh, disadvantage is you, when you are under a sectional title scheme, that means you pay your levies to the body corporate account. What is a body corporate? If I can just elaborate a, a little bit, the body corporate is, is, is a, a name or a term used and a given by individuals who shared a single elf under a sectional title scheme. So all the unit owners in that specific, uh, under that specific scheme, they are given or they are being referred to what we call a body corporate. So now, when you are living under a, a sectional title scheme where you form, a, where you are part of the body corporate, it's like you have a specific bank account for the body corporate. Now, you are liable for the bank charges. You are liable for audit fees that happen on that, on that account, and you, Within the sectional uh, title scheme, you have to have a responsibility to take care and manage that account on yourself. Unlike on a single residential, they don't care about bank account because they pay their, their written taxes straight to the municipality. If you have a vending machine or through your bank, you can pay your written taxes. But for this one, it carries more, a more heavier responsibility in the homeowner. That's uh, another uh, advantage. Another, I mean, disadvantage. Another disadvantage is like, um, when then the board corporate account is in areas or in debt, the whole members, all the members within that board corporate are responsible, are indebted. So that's another disadvantage. 
And as I say, any repairs and maintenance need to happen in, a com in what we call common areas. Both unit owners forming that body corporate under that section of title schemes, they have to contribute and pay for that repair. And again, you will not really necessarily have your own insurance cover for your fire. You must have a unified uh, insurance cover. And decision, again, another thing, the decision made in the body corporate under a section of title scheme can be made by the majority, but still affect every uh, unit owner or every member of the body corporate. Whether you agree or do not agree as an individual, once the majority strike the decision or vote for the decision, you are got nothing to do. You just have to comply. For Bill, the sectional title, funny part of it again, I think I failed to mention it in, into the, uh, the disadvantage is you must share the color. The body corporate, you, the unit under the body corporate share the, 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 the color. It's, it's what you call uniformity. So you will not have your, your own color. Maybe if the color is, is, is maroon, you will not paint your house white or you paint your house red. All the unit within that body corporate, within that section of title scheme must be maroon. So you do not have that um, luxury to, to actually uh, um, uh, do it paint individually your house as per your like. And uh, of course, if you want to do additional to your, to, to, to your, to your, to your, to your unit, uh, in Osona, for instance, we have what you call freestanding house. Under your, uh, under your participation quota, you still have some lot of space available that you can perhaps build, develop further. You can make adjustments. You want maybe to buy, to, to build a garage. You want to build additional, uh, additional room, or you want to build a boundary wall. You can do that, provided that you follow the, of course, the necessary procedure whereby you, 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 you do your, 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 your architectural design, your plan, and have it submitted. Uh, through all the relevant authority for approval, you can do that. And another funny part of it is as well that if you want to make an adjustment to your house, you need to have a consent from your neighbor. That's another part. You cannot just have it, you, have to have, you need to have a consent from your neighbor. Now, Mr. Pender, there seems to be a lack of education when it comes to actually buying property with the general community. Tell me, most people that buy in sectional title setups are not well informed with regards to these setups. Um, due to some instance, especially when the sectional title is freestanding, what does the law say in protecting the people from not being informed thoroughly? It's a quite a challenging question, that one. Uh, 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 keeping in mind that um, the decision to buy a house, regardless of which scheme you are buying it from or to whom the developer is buying it from, it's solely depending on you as a buyer. So you need, as I said already, you need to make sure that you protect yourself first. Because the system is like this. You have a buyer, no, you, you have a, a, a developer, you have a bank, a banking institution where you are getting your bond from, and you have a, an agent. So them, they will sell you what they see deem fit for them. They will sell you Sometimes uh, people were saying we were sold dreams because what we were sold is not what is actually on the ground. Uh, so the very first layer of protection that I can advise the potential buyer, the next uh, person whoever willing to buy under section of title or any uh, uh, residential, or, or any residential um, scheme, you just need to understand and to make a proper research. Don't make a rush decision or don't be more... Uh, like you are rushing to buy your, 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 your house. Perhaps you are tired of renting, you've been renting for quite a while, and you just want to have the dream come true of owning your own house. So you need to make a proper research so that you can make a proper, well-informed decision. It's going to be very easy, uh, uh, difficult for you to try to ascertain a responsibility to, to, to a certain individual. Maybe after living in your, uh, after getting in your house whereby you have signed what we call the title deed with your lawyers and the bank have already done the transaction to the developer the agent is out of question because they have been paid as well it's now going to make it it is quite difficult for you as, as, as a homeowner to see 
who can take that responsibility in terms of why was this thing, why was I not informed in in, in area? Was I being like skimmed? Where, where, where did they sell uh, this uh, this house to me under false pretenses because I never really. Um, uh, allowed it all information from the onset so that I can make a, a very informed decision. So it's going to be very difficult for you. And as I say, the act itself, maybe it's also big. Uh, you, there might be some protection, um, uh, protecting the system now that is for the, the, the bank, the developer and the agent. So you are now going to be a single individual fighting for that system. So uh, in a nutshell, the first layer of protection is through uh, yourself doing a proper research before you buying or before committing to buy a certain house. And uh, another thing that can help is the, is the kind of initiative that we are now trying to, uh, to, 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 to design, which is now uh, made to at least enlighten possible uh, uh, buyers, uh, future buyers, that, uh, to give this kind of information so that people can at least have that information from the uh, neutral person, not from agent, not from a developer, not from a bank perhaps. Uh, not from a lawyer perhaps, because bank, lawyers, agent, they are all interlinked. It's, they are all in for money. At the end of the day, if the, the, the developer did not sell, the bank does, that, does not make its money. If the developer did not sell, the agent doesn't get the money. If the developer did not sell, the lawyers also as well does not get the money. So that system is, is, is quite complicated and interlinked. So it's quite going to be very difficult to fight with. So informational sharing on this kind of platform will be perhaps the way uh, to, to liberate the people and to make sure that a natural person presents such information to a potential buyer, whereby then they, they will have uh, more information and be able to make really informed decision before committing to buy into more special uh, uh, under sectional title scheme. Now, Mr. Penda, you spoke about sectional titles and when it comes to whole body corporate. And, and the whole issues regarding that. In what instance does the sectional titles come to benefit? That's a very trick question. I've been living under the sectional title, but up to now, I cannot really see it becoming uh, beneficial to me. Because your levies, if you are living under sectional title scheme, your levies are higher. When you, when you, when you, look, at your, when you look at paying your levies, because your levy then includes your written taxes, your refuse, uh, removal, your street cleaning and all that. They are quite higher compared to this uh, single uh, residential. Uh, you might be, your participation quota might be 290 square meter and somebody is having, a single residential person is having an L for 600 square meter. That person might just pay below 600 in a written taxes. But you, because you fall under a, a sectional title scheme, you are likely to pay more than 900. The difference is coming is here, uh, in your levies, there's, there's, there are a lot of quite inclusion. There is what you call your, your, the, the overall uh, insurance cover for the body corporate. There's management, there's the managing agent fee. Uh, in Osona, for instance, we are lucky, uh, we are not being charged by much by the managing agent. But in Uvinduk, for instance, you are finding a managing agent ask as little as, um, as little as, as at least 150 and some can, can ask uh, 200. Imagine now if you have 200 um, added to your normal written taxes uh, that you're supposed to pay, the cost can easily uh, escalate. And again, to make matters worse, the managing agent are bound to increase their managing, uh, their managing fees uh, per annum by perhaps 10%. Now each and every uh, one uh, each and every year, you are seeing an increase of 10% on your management fee. That, that, that's not good. I mean, that, that, that's not an adv uh, advantage for me. Because it's for life. It's for life. For as long as you live and you own that house, that, 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 that's what you have encountered. So the benefit, as I already say, is uh, it's cheaper. Sometimes it's cheaper uh, depending on how many units, uh, I mean, how many square uh, meter did you buy, whether your house is a two bedroom or three bedroom. Uh, if it's 500 for unit, that is the cost of your unit, then it, it, it can be a little bit, bit uh, cheaper uh, going forward perhaps, but at the end of the day, it become, it's gradually becoming expensive with all these uh, increases. Your increases in, 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 in insulin premium is there uh, and uh, increases in management fee is there. So 
I don't really see any benefit apart from being cheaper and appropriate perhaps for the first, first uh, low income, first uh, home time buyer, uh, at least to have your uh, sense of owning your house uh, and perhaps move on as, as you grow. Uh, that, 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 uh, that, that's better, but yeah. Mr. Pender, thank you so much for joining us on today's show. We value your expertise, your opinions, and your views. And I must say, somewhere, somehow, you have definitely saved somebody a lot of headache today. Thank you so very much for joining us, and we'll talk to you again sometime. Thank you, Mr. Pender. So that was it for today's show. We would like to thank Mr. Pender, our very own community activist, as well as body corporate member, who enlightened us so very well today on the, the difference that is between sectional titles as well as single titles. And uh, I would like to thank him so very much. And I would like to thank you for tuning in today, for watching the show. And I hope you actually learned something today. I learned a whole lot. My name is Walla Walia. I'd like to say thank you and good night. <music>